Hello everyone and welcome to Adam Shar Weekly. And in this video, I'm going to show you how you can create a very simple paint application for Mac OS using SurfUI. So you can already see that I'm using a Mac OS application, not an iOS application, but all the things that we are covering can be applied to iOS also. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and set my parent over here to be a VStack and give it a some sort of a minimum width and a minimum height. So let's say minimum width, we're going to say 400 and minimum height 400. So that the basically the place of window is a little bit bigger. Okay, there we go. So the next step would be to construct some sort of a structure that will represent a line. So I'm going to go ahead and create a structure over here, but obviously you can create the struct uh, anywhere you want. So I'm just going to call it line. And a line will consist of points, which will be CG point. So let's go ahead and say CG point, and we will simply go ahead and initialize it with CG point, uh, something like that. So basically when we are creating a line, it has some points associated with it. We can also go ahead and add a color to it. And by default, I'm just going to go ahead and set the color to be red. But you can obviously change the color and we will change the color. All right. Since we're here, we can go ahead and also apply the width for the line. And by default, we're just going to have the width to be 1.0. So this creates our line structure. The next thing that we want to do is to use the new control, which is called the canvas. Canvas is basically a great uh, view where you can do drawing, and that was introduced in iOS 15, so we're going to use that. When you create canvas, it's going to pass you two different things, the contacts and the actual size of the window, or, or actual size basically where you're drawing. Now, currently, we are not really doing anything with anything right now. So what we're going to do is since we want to draw inside the canvas, we need to go ahead and create some sort of gestures on the canvas itself. So let's go ahead and add a gesture. And the gesture that we're interested in is the drag gesture. And we can go ahead and set the minimum and the coordinate space. The minimum doesn't really matter in this case. And the coordinate space is local, which means that we are uh, talking about the coordinate space in the canvas itself. And now we can go ahead and perform different actions, which is on changed. On change is going to fire whenever we are start drawing something. So basically, our mouse click is down and we are just drawing something. So that's the on change event that's going to get fired. It's going to give us some sort of a value. All right, let's go ahead and see if we can uh, actually structure it a little bit better by moving it over here. There we go. So that's our on change event. The other event that we are interested in is called the on ended event. The on ended event is an event that is going to get fired whenever you're done drawing. So basically your mouse up function gets fired when you're done. So once you are drawing something over here or on change is getting fired. We can use this value that is already passed to you. So you can see the value over here is a drag gesture. And in that drag gesture, you will have a location, which is going to give you the point. So let's get that new point. So if I'm over here and I'm drawing something and I'm going to draw something using a different tool, which has nothing to do with it. Uh, this is a demo pro tool. So we are not really using our app to draw. But I'm just showing you that if I draw something right there, uh, this is the on change event fired over here, 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 all of it. And I right at the end, right here, the on ended event got fired. All right. Okay, so we got the new point. Now, what should we do with this point? Well, we need to create an instance of the line and we need to add the point to it. So I'm going to go ahead and create an instance of a point, I mean, on, on the line. I'm just going to call it current line and we will create the instance. All right. So once we get the new point, we are going to go ahead 
and add that to the points. Append, new element, and new point. Great. Now, this is just one current line that we have added. We can have many different lines. So we should also have an array to hold all of those different lines. So I'm going to go ahead and say lines, and I will say line, and I will simply go ahead and initialize it with an empty array. This will contain all the lines. So once the on change is getting fired, you put the current line or the current point into the points array, and we can go ahead and add that particular uh, line into our lines array. So lines.append current line. Great. So let's say that if we go ahead, if we try to draw something right now, will it draw? Well, it's not really going to draw because in the canvas itself, you're not really using these lines to draw it out. So inside the canvas, we're going to go ahead and go through all the lines that you have collected. We're going to go ahead and create a path. That path is going to allow you to draw. And using the add line function, we can take the line with all the points and we can go ahead and draw them. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and say line in. We're missing the in part. And finally, we can go ahead and say context.stroke, the path with the color. The good thing is that the color is available in line.color and the line.width also. So we can say line.color, line.width, which are part of the lines, and we can draw something. Let's go ahead and run this. And you can see that already we are able to draw, but whenever we draw, it kind of looks like it's joining all these lines. Even if I try to create two different lines, like this one and this one, it kind of joins the last line, the last point with the line. So it's not really allowing me to independently draw two different drawings. So that will take us to the on end it function. What we want to do is on end it, we should just end the line and create a new object. So self dot lines dot append the current line. So in this case will be the current line. And self dot current line equals to line. And we can go ahead and add this points. So we're just going to add an empty colored over here. And over here, we can go ahead and we technically don't really need to provide the color and the width since they have a default value. So let's go ahead and go with this one. And let's go ahead and remove this line also and see that if we can create two different lines. So you can see that it's working perfectly fine, right? Now I can create two separate lines and it works perfectly fine. Great. So it looks like this is working perfectly fine. Great. It would be really nice if we have the capability of selecting colors. Now, it would be really nice if we can have colors right over here, like a list of five or six colors that we can select and we can use that to draw. Now, in one of the previous lectures, previous videos that I did, uh, we went through creating a color selector view. Now you can build, you can use a color picker, which is already available to you. So you can use a color picker, but uh, I'm just going to go ahead and create it myself. All right. Now I will call it color picker view. So let's go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and add, first of all, I'm going to add a new file. I will call it constants. And don't worry about constant. It's not much. It's simply some variables, some constant hard-coded variables that will allow us to refer to some of these uh, icons. Now, we're not really using all of these icons anyways, but uh, we will use a couple of these at least. All right. So in this case, we might use circle and I think we might use circle inset so we are not really using most of them well i'm just going to keep all of them you know i got this code from my other projects i'm just going to keep all of them it doesn't really matter all right let's go back to the content view okay so what we want is to display a color selector view over here 
Now, I have already written color picker view earlier on, so I'm just going to go ahead and use that. And it was covered in my last video also. So I will call it color picker view. And here is a color picker view. If I go ahead and run the preview, you should be able to see how it looks like. So it looks pretty cool. You can see that there are dots or circles, and you can see that the one that is selected is the one with the dot, the white dot inside. And that's the whole code for the color picker view. So using this color picker view, we can display and select a particular color. So our next task is to display the color picker view. All right. So I'm going to go, going to make sure that we are inside the V stack. And I'm going to go ahead and say color picker view. The only thing you need to pass into the color picker view, the custom one that we just made, is a selected color. Meaning that whenever the color picker view selects a color, it will, it's going to give it to you. But you need to pass in a binding of a color. So this means that I will have to go on the top and create a state variable, which will act as a binding. So I will say a selected color color and by default which is going to set it to red and now i can pass in the binding selected color and that's it this will allow us to select a color using our color picker view let's go ahead and see how it looks like in the preview you we should be able to see that how the color picker view is being displayed let's see if the preview works there we go. So this is how it's displayed. Now, if you want to give it a little bit more extra padding or something, we can probably go to our V stack and add a bit of a padding. So there we go. A little bit of padding. Looks great. Now, every time we select a color from a color picker view, we can go ahead and utilize that color to change the line color. All right, so that is something that we can actually do. So let's go ahead and say over here that whenever you change the color picker view or whenever the color picker view changes, we will listen for the changes on selected color. We will get the new color. And using that new color, we can do kernline.color equals to new color. All right, so this will allow us to set the color for a particular line. The other thing we need to do is when we are creating a new line, we can also go ahead and say over here that the color is the selected color. Now with that changes, let's go ahead and run it. Okay, so now we can see the color picker view. I'm going to draw a line that is red. That's great. I'm going to select orange and now it's displaying orange. How about green? displaying green, how about blue, displaying blue, and finally purple. So it looks like the color picker view is allowing us to change different colors for the different lines that we are drawing. That's great. The other thing that we want to do is to add capability for setting the thickness. I mean, some lines can be thick, some lines can be thin. So how can we provide the user with that? Now, there are many different ways of creating the thickness part of it. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put this color picker view into an edge stack. And we will simply use a very simple slider control for thickness. So if I create a slider, you can see that slider consists of many different things. Uh, we're going to go ahead and say the binding property will be, let's say, thickness. In close range, let's say the range is only 1 to 20. So that's the thickness level that we have and the text that will appear uh, we're just going to call it thickness and adding a divider in the middle now obviously there is no such thing as thickness so we have to go up and create that particular property and it's it's going to be simply a double property so there we go we just created a thickness state property let's go ahead and build it so that we can at least see the slider we're going to go ahead and refresh our view And we're going to see that if the slider for the thickness selector is being displayed or not. Sometimes you can see the 
preview takes a while, but there we go. So it does display. Now, this is way too big. Now, obviously, we don't really want it to be too big. So I'm just going to go ahead and set the frame. And we can say that the maximum width for this can be, let's say, 200. All right. Now, one thing that I'm noticing is that the divider is just insanely huge for some weird reason. Uh, I'm not sure why the divider is so huge, but let's go ahead and run the app and see. Yeah, divider for some reason is coming out to be insanely huge. Um, we will see if we can fix that. I'm not really sure why the divider would be this big. Uh, one thing we can try out is we can go ahead and set this frame. Instead of this over here, we can probably set the frame on the canvas. Maybe that will help the divider to be a little bit low. Here we go. So now that fixed it. All right. So canvas is 400 by 400 uh, and not the V stack. Okay. So that fixed the divider. All right. So now what we want to do is we have the slider and we can go ahead and add on change on it, on change. And whenever the thickness changes, you give us the new thickness. So we will say new thickness. And we can go ahead and set it to the current line dot thickness or the line width, new thickness. And the same thing we're going to do over here on the on ended, where we can say line width. That can be simply the thickness value. And that's it. Let's go ahead and run the application and try to see if we can draw with a different thickness level. So you can see that right now it's fine. I'm going to get it a little bit more thick and there we go. And what about extremely, there we go. You can see that this is super thick. Uh, let's go ahead and give it a little bit less. You can see that we can draw pretty nicely different thickness level also. So there you go. We have just created the paint application in Surf UI, and you can see that it's quite simple to create at least a basic paint application. I mean, I would not say that this is like the best paint application or this and that. I mean, but it's a pretty basic paint application, which also allows you to do thickness and uh, selecting colors and, and so on. All right. So definitely it's an interesting project, and you can see that it's a very less amount of code that we have to type to make it to work. If you like this video and want to support my channel, then the best way would be to check out my Udemy courses. I have a lot of different Udemy courses. You can see test driven development, Swift UI interfaces for Apple devices, Swift for advanced core data, a Swift UI cookbook, Mastering Rx Swift, and a lot more, even a course on async innovate. So the best way to get these courses is to check out the YouTube description. I have all the links of the courses in the YouTube description. Thank you so much for your continuous support and hope you enjoy these videos.